Hello family, welcome back to another video and if this is your first time stopping by, I'm Shauna LaCale and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be sharing my home updates, styling ideas, some DIYs and lots of inspiration coming your way. I've decided to remove everything off this wall. I purchased three mirrors for decorative purposes more than functional. They are large with a distinctive black edge frame. It's stylish, modern, and lightweight. Now, we're going to go ahead and move over to the other wall. I want to address the elephant in the room. And it is this wall. I have always struggled with this wall because it's an oversized huge wall. My husband has added to my dilemma, making it even more challenging to find artwork to fit it without obstructing the view by purchasing this large 75 inch TV, which takes up a big portion of the wall, not to mention it blocks the artwork. I was sitting in my home office one day and I had an aha moment. I think a board and batten would be perfect for the wall, like we did in my dream home office video. Just do a different pattern and that definitely will make the wall pop. Earlier in March, I purchased a new rug. I shared a short. This rug is big. It's 9 by 12. It's a washable rug. And so far, I'm loving the modern abstract look. I will leave a link in my description box if, if the rug is still available. I will be replacing the ceiling fan. I purchased a modern fan that goes with the space and I also will be adding a few touches of fall decor to the fireplace mantle. My taste has changed, so it's not your traditional fall colors at all. I also purchased those two Ottmans. I want to say I purchased those probably like the later part of spring. Mark wanted to go to Home Depot to see if they had any wood marked down and he found some in the back back there and um, he went and got the guy and he just went on and spray painted the wood using the purple spray and that tells them to mark it down 70% off the price. Definitely some great savings and you can definitely find some. So hey, that's a little tip. I'm um, sharing with you guys what we do. Then we also uh, went on over to Lowe's to pick up, you know, some additional wood that we would need so that we can go ahead and do the project. Well, we are back home and it is such a beautiful day here in Georgia. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping. So Mark and I set up shop out on our deck and what we're doing, I asked him to cut down some of the wood that we had from previous projects that we couldn't use. And I figured that I can use it and create some beautiful artwork to go in the family room so he's showing me how to use the big boy machine i'm trying y'all i'm gonna leave most of that up to him that's not my area of expertise because i'm so afraid of you know getting cut so i but i did do a little bit so once he cut them down i went on and i sand them i want to make sure each one of these little squares are nice and smooth no rough edges i then went and started painting them black i add my paint you can use whatever choice of paint you like and this is what it looks like once it's all dry and then i took some spackle to give it some um, definition some texture so that it can pop and i used it on 
different ones. I didn't use each and each one. And I know I shared this short on on IG as well as on YouTube. So this is what I did. So once I got the texture on there and I let it dry overnight, then I took my spray paint and I went in, I started spray painting the texture and allowed that to dry. And then once it dried, I went on and I said, okay, I have this artwork. I shared this last year with you guys when I did my family room. I brought it from another room into the family room. So I was like, oh, I don't like it anymore. I'm going to go ahead and use this. And this is going to be my little masterpiece. So I just painted it black. And then I took the little squares and I made a design and we use E6000 to secure them. I let them sit overnight and I wanted sisters, not twins. And this is the final results. It's time to address the elephant in the room. I am painting the wall tricorn black by Sharon William. Mark has cut all the boards that are needed to create this accent wall. We have dry fit certain boards and we numbered them already. If you want to learn how to do a board and batten, I am going to refer you to my dream home office video where we did the same type of technique with step-by-step -step instructions and I will leave a link in the description box below. The design we are going to create, I couldn't find a name for it so Mark and I came up with our own name, Climbing the Ladder. I have inserted a photo of our inspiration for this wall. This design has two different sizes of rectangular boxes, small and large. The concept to this board and batten is we will start the first section with a small rectangular and the large rectangular. And then next section, we will do the opposite or should I say the reverse. We took in consideration the wall outlets wanted to make sure we leave enough space for each wall cover. Mark has also pre-cut two spacer boards so that we can achieve the correct spacing and measurements. Just in case you have missed some of our other home renovation videos, I will leave a playlist in the description box below. We started out with our master bathroom renovation where my cabinet doors were peeling from the cabinet and our mirror was dry rot and we made some custom frames to hide it as well. Then we moved on to our laundry room. I was faced with the same issue of my cabinets peeling. I also shared how to paint your faucet and paint your tile floors. Our kitchen reno was our biggest reno because we had tile floors. We added new hardwood floors. I rejuvenated my kitchen cabinets, painted the kitchen island, switched out faucet, painted my kitchen chairs to give our kitchen a modern look. My dream home office was a hot mess. I work from home full time and I needed a space that I could be able to work in. Mark and I turned it into a beautiful, cozy, warm and inviting workspace for me. We've added our very first board and batten accent wall. We pulled up old carpet, installed new hardwood floors, created a section in my home office for our gym equipment when not in use. All of these videos that I mentioned are inspiring and I hope you will be able to find something you can incorporate into your home. If you are enjoying my video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up and please share it with a family member or friend. Thank you so much for your loyal support.
the accent wall is definitely coming together and you can definitely see the pattern that's going on on the wall I did all of the finished touches off camera Now the accent wall is completed. It's stunning, unique, and definitely created interest and a conversational piece when family and friends come over. Well, Mark thought he was finished. Well, I threw a curveball and decided I would like to do something to that corner over there. On that wall, I thought it would be a great idea to add floating shelves and put a couple of cabinets below them. Mark accepted the challenge and he just went crazy with it. He, one day he called me after work and he said, tonight is your lucky night. I was like, what do you mean? He said, I found a big piece of plywood that they are giving away free. I said, free? He said, yeah, baby, free. So he said, I need you to come on up here with the truck so we can load it and bring it home. So here we are back at home it's night and we are out here working so he's going to go ahead and measure the board to the exact uh, measurements that we need to cut it to and he is going to cut that board he also found another piece of plywood that was slightly damaged for half price so um, he cut that part off and then of course did the measurements and we brought it inside the house the next day and then we just wanted to go ahead and glue these pieces together to make one thick board. We are applying wood glue to um, both sides of the board and that we're going to take this uh, roller, paint roller, and roll it in all over on all the ends, just making sure we do not miss any areas and that way we can make sure that it will you know secure correctly as we continue to butt the two boards together one of the things we definitely taken in consideration is making sure that we align them on top of each other evenly we don't want the boards to secure and they're not even so that is so important to make sure that it's even all around all sides We're going to add clamps on all four corners to make sure that they are secure and that they dry properly. Now we're going to move on to the second shelving and we're going to take those same steps and do the same exact thing. Now that the board's had time to dry, Mark has removed all the clamps off and we're gonna go outside and he's gonna start sanding them down to make sure the board corners are all nice and smooth.
To make the floating shelves look seamless and professionally done, we will be adding edge banding to the shelves. I'm using edge banding wood veneer that is a pre-glue. All you have to do to apply it is use a hot iron to heat up the glue. And then after applying the edge banding, I'm going to check to make sure that there are no air pockets by tapping along. And if you hear a hollow sound, you need to apply more heat. You want to hear solid sound when checking. I am now going to go ahead and sand the veneer edge banding down so that it, everything can be nice and smooth and it can take the paint that I'm going to apply. Now it's time to paint and I am using the same paint, Tricorn Black by Sherwin Williams. I did allow my paint to dry. I added a total of three coats and this is what the finished look is looking like. And then I will add the polyurethane to seal it. Mark is marking where the floating shelves brackets will go. We are installing a total of eight brackets allow four brackets per shelf. We are not able to hit a stud on each bracket, but we definitely hit several. The rods are 10 inches long and holds up to 80 pounds. I will link as much as I can in the description box. Before Mark do any drilling, he likes to always um, make sure we do a dry fit. So he put all the two shelves in place and this is how it will look. Just know that it's going to be floating shelves. We do have a spoiler alert there. We, we will not be able to finish this, but we did not want to delay the video. Uh, one of the tools that he need to do the job did not come in. He went around in our local area. Uh, trying to locate it and it is just too pricey so we're going to sit and wait and be patient but trust me an update will be coming now i purchased these cabinets from ikea and look inside it has two shelves and it's perfect so i can't wait to um, decorate but in the inside i know i want to house my candles and some other items in there but when i decorate this space i can't wait to add some of my precious you know items up here just to make it look really nice and pop so i will give an update coming soon We're going to move on to me decorating the mantle. I want subtle and I want um, simple. I don't want a lot of decoration. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a few items. My color scheme is going to be like an olive moss color. And the pumpkins that I have that I'm going to be putting up here, I DIY them. When you can't find what you want, you create it and that's what I did so I um, went on and DIY it I add some baking soda to it and just to give it some texture and it turned out really nice the hello fall I did that last year and all I did was just painted the frame so that it can match with my aesthetics and then I'm going to add two candlesticks and put some candles in there and another moss pumpkin that I found at Target for $3 in their dollar section. And that's all I'm going to do. On the hearth, all I did was add a basket that I already had. I add some um, fall stems and a pumpkin and a sign and that's it. We're going to move on to my coffee table and I'm just sharing some styles of how to style a coffee table. I want simple and subtle. Don't want a lot. Just things that I need on the table uh, for decorations. Okay. It's really simple. Anyone can do this. And I just love this beautiful vase that I scored and I shared the fall um, stems with you in a short. 
underneath the coffee table I am just adding some decorative um, coffee table books these are your ones that you open up for storage and that's how this little section will look right here they are really nice to use and they're very inexpensive so I love the way this look and as I said I scored that vase I got that when we were on vacation in Myrtle Beach at the home goods and i was just impressed i was like wow this is the second coffee table styling i added my mika pots and the stems are from the at home store i also added some artichokes that matches the stem candles and coffee table books i'm gonna go ahead and add this throw to the sofa and I will be adding some beautiful pillows to complement it. I am giving you an overview of the family room. Look at those beautiful mirrors. Mark did a wonderful job. I mean, perfect how he spaced them out. They definitely are a statement in this room. And I love also, you can see a peak of my ceiling fan. It's so beautiful. This mirror definitely was what we needed. Now, these are my pillow combination. I have a solid, a pattern, as well as texture. And I carried that same look right here. I also have a little side table with a candle on it. And I used some other um, green color just to kind of offset that moss color. And I think that was a perfect combination right there. Really love how this room turned out. And I hope you are finding it to be inspiration and finding something in my space that you could probably incorporate into your home as well. The rug, I'm loving this rug from Boutique Rugs. And um, I purchased this way back in the early part of the year. And just to see how everything is coming together, my vision it's definitely coming together and I'm loving how everything looks. Added some new curtains to the wall. I wanted something to help brighten this room up because of the black accent wall and also the um, DIY artwork. Definitely, I love how that turned out. It is really, really a nice piece, simple DIY that you can create yourself. And here's the accent wall. Um, we're not going to put anything on it. We're just going to go ahead and leave it as is. It's just going to act as a backdrop to the TV. Um, we're not putting anything on that wall other than what it is, just how you see it. Again, we want to thank you and we greatly appreciate your support.